everyone, this is Amy Cooper from RISE, and we are here talking to exceptionally special women for Women's History Month. So today with me, Lauren Meltzer uh, from RPS. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you for having me. Uh, so Lauren, tell us a little bit about what you do. So I um, am the Vice President of Market Relations at RPS. So basically, I oversee and lead all of our carrier and market relationships nationally on behalf of RPS. So we work with our carriers and markets to grow profitably, have strategic initiatives, um, and all that fun stuff. Awesome. It's a pretty big job. So uh, let's talk about that. How do you actually maintain work-life balance while pursuing a successful career? Well, I'm still trying to figure it out, but um, I love this question because it seems like no one ever has an answer. And I, I love hearing when people do. So I figure a couple of tidbits um, that I'll share that I've kind of picked up along the way. Um, the first is that I have an amazing husband and he is totally supportive of my career and my career aspirations. And so I feel like having that foundation really helps with some semblance of balance because we distribute work at home equally. Um, and then the other part of it is I, um, I plan our calendars in advance and I have non-negotiables for what happens in the home life, right? Kids birthdays, the school musical, um, the last day of school, I absolutely have to be home. So, um, but then the same goes for certain work duties and requirements. Last year, I um, I missed Halloween with my kiddos because I was in London on a work trip and we all survived. It was fine. So, um, but I, I really try to stick to that. So I I know I have, I have a little bit of the balance there. Um, and then... You know, the other thing that I just like to be totally transparent about is that I outsource things. So I know that I'm privileged and I'm in a position where I can do this and not everybody is, but I look at my time as how valuable is my time? And if there are certain things I can pay somebody else to do so that I can spend more time with my kids or do something else that is important to me, um, I will do it. And I think not enough women talk about that for whatever reason. Um, but it makes my life a lot easier, especially when I'm, I'm traveling a lot. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in a group chat with a bunch of ladies talking about our Uber Eats addictions. Our, yeah. our... <laughs> exactly. exactly. Outsource where you can, you know, why not? Uh, momming or being a mom sometimes is uh, the most important job. So do you, can you share a defining moment in your career that played a crucial role in your success? Yeah, I, um, I love this question. So about 10, 11 years ago, um, I was working as a carrier um, or working at a carrier as a middle market underwriter. And I had about five years of experience at that time. And I had been in underwriting all five years and I knew I didn't, I didn't love underwriting. It wasn't where I wanted my career to grow and I, I wanted something else. So a new position opened up in my office that was a director level position for technology insurance and life sciences, which I had I'd never done before, but it was a business development type role. I had p &L responsibility. It had um, people management and I figured the worst they could say to me is no. Um, and so I applied for the job and, you know, I was honest with them about the lack of experience, but I knew what I could bring in terms of my hustle, my skills, my commitment, and that I could grow into the position. And so um, they offered me the job and I was in that role for four years and I learned so much, not just about technology, but uh, different skill sets, influencing internally, um, public speaking, executive presence. And, you know, I, when I look back on that, and even when I tell people about it, I, I know I applied for that job only being probably 50% qualified for it. And it really, you know, changed my mindset going forward in my career that if I don't ask, the answer is always no. Like I just, you don't know. So why not take the chance? The worst is that a door gets slammed in your face and you keep going. Um, and so it's, it's really been my mindset since then and helped me um, to assert myself and be able to ask for other opportunities, anything from 
salary increases, title changes, you know, new increased responsibility. You know, if I don't ask, I'm not going to get it. So um, having that happen really kind of set the, the stage for my career up to this point. It's always a good motto. You got to ask. If you don't ask, the answer is always no, right? Right. Exactly. Uh, so what advice could you give other uh, women who are aspiring to reach similar heights in their career? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously my, my new tagline, if you never ask, the answer is always no. But also you own your career. You have to let people know what you're interested in. You have to let and not just your manager, you have to speak up to people at your organization in different parts of the company to say, you know, here's what I'm interested in, or here's what I would like to do more of, or I want to manage people. Because if you, if you don't tell people, then they're not going to know. And nobody's going to come to you and just be like, Hey, you're doing great. Would you like to, you know, come do something else? It might happen, but it's, it's, it's rare, right? So you really have to have to drive that and get to know people in different divisions and, and, and network. Um, my other piece of advice that somebody gave me um, several years ago that I think has helped is don't come to me with a problem if you don't have an idea for a solution. So we're, we never have the answers to everything, but if you just go to management or leadership or the people you work with, the problem, what should I do? You know, it's much more receptive if you go to them and say, here's the challenge I have. Here's what I'm thinking. What do you think? And then it shows management that you've thought through it. You have the analytical skills to think through and problem solve, but you also get to hear their opinion and their feedback. Um, and it goes goes much further. So um, and then the last thing is to have solid mentors and sponsors uh, in your circle, because I, it, it really helps to have perspective from people that are in roles you want to be in and to help you help you understand how they got there you know what were some of the challenges they faced how did they overcome those roadblocks um and just having people that will support you and you know advocate for you if a opportunity comes up so building out that network is so important yeah so obviously mentorship's been important to you how have you benefited from mentorship in your career yeah, I mean, I have had some really great mentors and I, I just think it's so important because there are people that have so many different experiences, right? Like a white woman in insurance versus a white man versus a black man versus a, you know, they, everybody has a different experience and different challenges and things that they've overcome. And so to be able to talk about challenges or situations you're facing with different people, with different experiences, allows you to look at things in different ways that you, you never would have. And so, you know, I have found it especially helpful to go to women in leadership roles that you know, have been through the trenches to say, like, here's a problem I'm having, or, you know, I'm really struggling with this and how to get this person to understand or hear me and have them say, here's how I approached it. Or, you know, have you thought about doing it this way? Um, it's kind of like coaching you to, to help you get to the, the solution or at least try to figure out how to address it. But I also think it's really helpful to have mentors inside and outside your organization because internally people can help you. They know the structure of the business. They know the internal politics, the internal strategies. So they understand and can help problem solve. But people outside of the company have a different perception. You know, they can tell you from the outside what they think or, you know, things, pieces that you might be overlooking. Um, and so that's why I, th I just think it's so important to have people you can go to and bounce ideas off of. And, you know, maybe it's, I'm thinking about taking this new job. What do you think? And they, they might have a totally different perspective on the company or the role and what it looks like in the future, things that you might not even consider. So really good to, to get some additional support and feedback that way. Absolutely. hundred percent agree there. A little shameless plug for the Rise Mentorship Program yeah. if you uh, need help finding a mentor. 100%. And uh, th thank you so much, Lauren, for joining me today. Follow us for more Women's History Month interviews with exceptionally special women in insurance. Thank you.